covering in this one um, the reading, the material from the Lab 10 um, chapter. And so where we left off was we were talking about these ugly looking terms here, but you don't have to be intimidated by them. Um, uh, it's actually like pretty simple what the distinctions are. And uh, talking about these terms right here is actually going to bring us back to what we talked about in the previous video where we, we were talking about how classifications can change once we learn new information about um, DNA, especially because think about, you know, a lot of classifications um, were created before we really started to have ac good access to DNA um, evidence. But now that we do, it means that a lot of our prior assumptions about the natural world are going to have to change because now we have new DNA factoring into it. And so what I'm talking about here are these categories. So we have the haplorines and the strepsorines. That's how that's pronounced. And we have the prosimians and the anthropoids. Now, we, it used to be in anthropology, like when I was learning anthropology in college, that anthropologists divided the primate world into two categories, the prosimians and the anthropoids. So the anthropoids consisted of monkeys, apes, and humans, and prosimians were everything that was considered a primate that was not a monkey, ape, or a human. So that would also include animals such as, let me put it up here, um, the lemur. So the lemur is a primate. Oh, that's funny, actually, this guy right here. <laughs> yeah, this was actually just in the news that he um, stole a lemur from the zoo. It happened really recently, actually. So. And um, yeah, so he stole it from the zoo. You can look it up more if you want, but it happened here in California. I'm not sure which zoo he stole it from, but anyway, um, so the lemur is, um, is, a, is a type of primate. It is neither a monkey nor an ape. And, um, and so instead we have a separate classification for these types of primates. They are classified as, um, they are classified as the, uh, as prosimians, or they used to be classified as prosimians. Nowadays, they have a different classification, and I will explain why, going back to this. So why did that classification change? Because back in the day, they used to also include under the heading of prosimians, a particular type of primate called, we'll just leave that guy's face up there right there, because that's a pretty uh, classic mugshot. But we will also, uh, include in that now in this classification that includes the lemurs is um well sorry let me rephrase that the prosimians it used to also include the tarsier so tarsier used to be included as a prosimian because check it out this guy is obviously he is neither a monkey nor an ape yet we know he is a primate and why we know he's a primate we'll go over that in a minute so therefore people used to classify him under the heading of prosimian now the something new has come out which we now have the dna of tarsiers and now that we have their dna we have seen that their dna is closer to human monkey and ape dna than it is to lemur dna so what does that mean it means we had to shift the tarsier classification tarsiers used to be considered prosimians and now they have been shifted into the anthropoid category and as a result of that, they decided to basically discard these terms altogether because of the change in how we group the primates. So now we use the term haplorine and strepsorine. And that's what your book shows you, the class, the differences between the haplorine and the strepsorine. So haplorines are the humans, monkeys, and apes. And it's easy to remember because haplorine starts with H and it also includes humans. So haplorines are the monkeys, humans, and apes. And the strepsorines now are the ones who um, are not like humans, monkeys, and apes. Those are the lemurs. But unlike previously, the haplorines now also includes the tarsiers. So it's sort of weird. Haplorines are monkeys, apes, humans, and tarsiers, whereas strepsorines are all the other guys. So basically it comes down to moving the tarsiers from the prosimians to the anthropoids, and that ended up giving us these new categories, the haplorines, which includes the tarsiers versus the strepsorines. Okay, so obviously this tarsier is pretty in, uh, important to the classification of primates. Let's go back here and like just a little bit of trivia about why it's called a tarsier. It's because your heel bone 
is car called the tarsus bones that those are the bones that make up your heels so check it out the foot of the tarsier their heel is so long actually so this is the length of a human heel right here these are the bones that make up your heel whereas the tarsier's heel is a very very long and you can see that here that in these pictures of his feet i guess we can sort of see that that he's got a really really long heel and i have a video here um i don't know how much time we have to actually watch it but you can at least see how the tarsier locomotes in other words how he gets around and yes they're found in indonesia they're also found in the philippines too i think they also have them um in africa as well or they have a very related um animal called the bush baby or the galago but anyway so here's a tarsier i'll just show him for a second you can see him leaping onto his food there we go pretty good all right and he heads back so the way they move around is called vertical clinging and leaping and i'll put that here in the notes for vert vertical clinging and leaping Okay, so let's now go into talking about the primate traits. Like, why would something as weird as a tarsier be classified as a primate? And um, so I have a picture here up of the chimp named Frodo, uh, who I don't know if we've talked about in this class already. Um, it's funny, look at this headline, retirement of a demonic alpha male. <laughs> he was pretty demonic. He lived in the Gombe National Park in Tanzania in Africa, and he was just incredibly violent, like merciless, sadist. At one point, he actually murdered a human baby. Um, he actually snatched the human baby from a woman who was walking through um, his territory and he uh, he killed it. I think he might have even eaten it as well. So Frodo was absolutely a gangster and he ended up turning into like a retired gangster where he reached a certain age and he was no longer engaging in the violence. But, you know, people or I shouldn't call them people. Jim still had like a certain level of respect for him. Um, so let's just take a look at Frodo here and okay, what makes him a primate? So he has five digits, five fingers, and he has that opposable thumb right there, which means that his thumb can oppose every single one of his fingers. We all have that as humans. So he has the opposable thumb. I'll put that. That's an important primate trait, having that opposable thumb. That right there is like the hallmark pretty much. You know, that's, I would say the thing, one thing that all primates share, no exceptions is that opposable thumb and the five digits. Also, he has eyes that are forward facing, his eyes forward face, because on primates, our eyes, our, our main um, sensory input is our eyes. And our eyes have this way of working where they each get their own feed. But then the feed, those two feeds from left eye and right eye are received in the brain and the brain sort of crunches those um, visual feeds together and gives us one single image. So that's called stereoscopic vision. And we primates have that stereoscopic vision. Okay, so something else that makes a primate a primate is that small nose, you know, we have sort of a smaller nose than other mammals do, and that's because we have um, a lessened reliance on our sense of smell, you know think about like a dog, like his sense of smell is everything. Whereas for a human, their sense of smell is less important. You know, it's more about vision. Vision to us is everything. Like I think, you know, you can go about your day having lost your sense of smell, you know, say you um, have like the cold or something like that. You're not going to be like falling over because of that. But if you cannot see, you know, that is going to really um, impair you. So we are very heavily dependent on that. So that's just a few facts about what makes a primate a primate and your lab manual gets more into that. And let's go back to the notes really quick. So um, so we talked about the primate traits and they're um, within the classification of the haplorines. That includes monkeys and there's two types of monkeys. You have the new world monkeys and the old world monkeys. New world monkeys live in um, South America and Central America. The old world monkeys live in Asia and Africa. Um, note that there are no monkeys who naturally live in the environment of Europe or even Australia. Okay, so monkeys, it's not to say that they didn't at one point. I'm, sh um, you know, I'm sure there's extinct species of monkeys that had lived in Europe, as I know that there are extinct species of monkeys that had lived here in the Americas and extinct species of apes 
I mean to say that had lived here in the United States of America, but they're extinct now. But anyway, that's where they're currently found is in those places. So just to give you a visual of a new world monkey. Um, okay, so this is a squirrel monkey. That's an example of a new world monkey. And we can just watch this video for a second. Okay, so I, some point I paused the video. So I'm going to try to